it is that spirit that's made Howard a centerpiece of African American. Intellectual life and a central part of our larger American story. This institution has been the home of many firsts, the first black Nobel Peace Prize winner. The first black Supreme Court Justice. But its mission has been to ensure those firsts were not the last. Countless scholars. Professionals, artists, and leaders from every field received their training here. The generations of men and women who walked through this yard helped reform our government. Cure disease, grow a black middle class, advance civil rights, shape our culture. The seeds of change for all Americans were sown here. And that's what I want to talk about today. As I was preparing these remarks, I realized that when I was first elected president, Most of you the class of 2016 were just starting high school. Today, you're graduating college. I used to joke about being old. Now I realize I'm old. But seeing all of you here gives me some perspective. It makes me reflect on the changes that I've seen over my own lifetime. So let me begin with what may sound like a controversial statement a hot take. Given the current state of our political rhetoric and debate, let me say something that may be controversial. And that is this, America is a better place today than it was when I graduated from college. But think about it. I graduated in 1983. New York City. America's largest city, where I lived at the time.
had endured a decade marked by crime and deterioration and near bankruptcy. And many cities were in similar shape. Our nation had gone through years of economic stagnation, the stranglehold of foreign oil. A recession where unemployment nearly scraped 11%. The auto industry was getting its clock cleaned by foreign competition. And don't even get me started on the clothes and the hairstyles. I've tried to eliminate all photos of me from this period. I thought I looked good. Since that year since the year I graduated the poverty rate is down. Americans with college degrees. That rate is up. Crime rates are down. America's cities have undergone a renaissance. There are more women in the workforce. They're earning more money. We've cut teen pregnancy. In half. We've slashed the African American dropout rate by almost 60%. And all of you have a computer in your pocket that gives you the world at the touch of a button. In 1983, I was part of fewer than 10% of African Americans who graduated with a bachelor's degree. Today, you're part of the more than 20% who will. And more than half of blacks say we're better off than our parents. We're at our age and that our kids will be better off, too. So America is better. And the world is better, too. A wall came down in Berlin. An iron. Curtain was torn asunder. The obscenity of apartheid came to an end.
a young generation in Belfast and London have grown up without ever having to think about IRA bombings. In just the past 16 years, we've come from a world without marriage. Equality to one where it's a reality in nearly two dozen countries. Around the world, more people live in democracies. We've lifted more than 1 billion people from extreme poverty. We've cut the child mortality rate worldwide by more than half. America is better. The world is better. And stay with me now race relations are better since I graduated. That's the truth. No. My election did not create a post-racial society. I don't know who was propagating that notion. That was not mine. In my inaugural address, I remarked that just 60 years earlier, my father might not have been served in A.D. See restaurant at least not certain of them. There were no black CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Very few black judges. Shoot. As Larry Wilmore pointed out last week, a lot of folks didn't even think blacks had the tools to be a quarterback. Today, former Bull Michael Jordan isn't just the greatest basketball player of all time he owns the team. When I was graduating, the main black hero on TV was Mr. T. I am not saying gaps do not persist. Obviously, they do. Racism persists. Inequality persists. Don't worry I'm going to get to that. But I wanted to start, class of 2016, 
by opening your eyes to the moment that you are in. If you had to choose one moment in history in which you could be born, and you didn't know ahead of time who you were going to be what nationality, what gender, what race, whether you'd be rich or poor. Gay or straight, what faith you'd be born into you wouldn't choose 100 years ago. You wouldn't choose the 50s, or the 60s. Or the 70s. You'd choose right now. If you had to choose a time to be, in the words of Lorraine Hansberry. Young, gifted, and black in America, you would choose right now. I tell you all this because it's important to note progress. Because to deny how far we've come would do a disservice to the cause of justice. To the legions of foot soldiers, to not only the incredibly accomplished individuals who have already been mentioned. But your mothers and your dads and grandparents and great-grandparents. who marched and toiled and suffered and overcame to make this day possible. I tell you this not to lull you into complacency. but to spur you into action because there's still so much more work to do, so many more miles to travel. And America needs you to gladly, happily take up that work. You all have some work to do. So enjoy the party. Because you are going to be busy. Yes, our economy has recovered from crisis stronger than almost any other in the world. But there are folks of all races who are still hurting who still can't find. Work that pays enough to keep the lights on, who still can't save for retirement.
we've still got a big racial gap in economic opportunity. The overall unemployment rate is 5%, but the black unemployment rate is almost 9%. We've still got an achievement gap when black boys and girls graduate. High school and college at lower rates than white boys and white girls. Harriet Tubman may be going on the 20, but we've still got a gender gap when a black woman working full-time still earns just 66% of what a white man gets paid. We've got a justice gap when too many black boys and girls pass. Through a pipeline from underfunded schools to overcrowded jails. This is one area where things have gotten worse. When I was in college, about half a million people in America were behind bars. Today. There are about 2.2 million. Black men are about six times likelier to be in prison right now than white men. Around the world, we've still got challenges to solve that threaten everybody in the 21st century. Old scourges like disease and conflict, but also new challenges, from terrorism and climate change. So make no mistake, class of 2016 you've got plenty of work to do. But as complicated and sometimes intractable as these challenges may seem. The truth is that your generation is better positioned than any before you to meet those challenges, to flip the script. Now, how you do that, how you meet these challenges, how you bring about change will ultimately be up to you. My generation, like all generations, is too confined by our own experience, too invested in our own biases.
too stuck in our ways to provide much of the new thinking that will be required. But us old heads have learned a few things that might be useful in your journey. So with the rest of my time, I'd like to offer some suggestions for how young leaders like you can fulfill. Your destiny and shape our collective future bend it in the direction of justice and equality and freedom. First of all and this should not be a problem for this group be confident in your heritage. Be confident in your blackness. One of the great changes that's occurred in our country since. I was your age is the realization there's no one way to be black. Take it from somebody who's seen both sides of debate about whether I'm black enough. Look at Howard. One thing most folks don't know about Howard is how diverse it is. When you arrived here, some of you were like, oh, they've got black people in Iowa. This class comes from big cities and rural communities, and some of you crossed oceans to study here. You shatter stereotypes. Some of you come from a long line of bison. Some of you are the first in your family to graduate from college. And because of those who've come before you, you have models to follow. You can work for a company, or start your own. You can go into politics, or run an organization that holds politicians accountable. You can write a book that wins the National Book Award, or you can write the new run of Black Panther. Or, like one of your alumni, Tana Heise Coates, you can go ahead and just do both. You can create your own style, set your own standard of beauty, embrace your own sexuality.
Think about an icon we just lost Prince. He blew up categories. People didn't know what Prince was doing.